Hi, good afternoon. I'm so glad you could join me today. Um, you know, I'm Janie, and you know I have a show here at uh, SCC in White Bear Lake. And I have met, I go out and meet a lot of really neat people. Well, I was at a book signing uh, about tw uh, three weeks ago, and I met this, this fella. And he was so amazing that I, I said, oh my God, I've got to have you on my show. And he wrote a book, and it's called, um, his book is called um, uh, Faces on the Clock. Isn't that cool? His name is Larry Bauer Scandon. And I just thought, can you see that? I just thought that was so cool. And I met his son, one of his sons. He's, he's fostered many, many children. He'll tell you how many in a minute. Anyway, I would like to introduce you to Larry. This is Larry. And say hi, everybody. <laughs> hi, everybody. <laughs> so I'd like to ask you, Larry, um, what motivated you to write a book? Um, an illness, actually, that yeah. I had uh, uh, first struck back in December of 1957. Wound up in a hospital bed for four and a half months. Uh-oh. And I think it was the things that I was exposed to, the things that I saw. Yeah. I'd, I'd never seen a four-year-old dying of leukemia. Um, oh, you mean the, the people in the hospital, the right, people that you right. saw in the hospital. And of course, you, you know, you meet doctors, you meet nurses. Over that length of time, uh, they become friends. friends, as a matter of fact. One of them, the resident on the pediatrics ward um, back in 1957, <coughs> and I are still friends, what, 55 years later, 56 <laughs> yeah. years later, That's something great. like that. Although he's in better shape than I am. But, <laughs> well, you're also in a chair, so I just count. <laughs> so it, it got to be, over the years, um, Seeing these kids, seeing them die, seeing them leave, yeah. um, seeing how parents reacted to um, a child's dying. I mean, I remember yeah. scream, screaming in the middle of the night. Right, yeah. Well, that makes sense that that would take you into faces on the clock. That, that's kind of like all the different faces that you've seen in the hospital setting. Right, and some that I still still see to this day uh, sometimes I wonder if their parents think about them as much as I do I know I wonder different perspective of course but um, yeah. so I th I remember talking uh, telling this doctor friend of mine that I wanted to be a doctor fact of the matter is <laughs> I don't have the raw intelligence for it. <laughs> and the second thing about it is I can't stand the smell of a hospital so. <laughs> So, you know, two things that operated against it, but um, strictly by accident in 1967, I got an opportunity to work with some, what the Department of Corrections called pre-delinquent teenagers. Uh-oh, pre-delinquent, pre-delinquent. Whatever the heck that means, <laughs> um, on the street. Oh, wow. That and must have been so interesting. so it was, especially when I was working undercover for the department yeah. and the county probation department. Oh, wow. I don't think the kids knew that, but... Um, no. And we had a drop-in center, and they would, you know, scream and yell and whatever about parents or school or... Right. Whatever it happened to be, and I was supposedly... Um, supposed to make suggestions as to how they could deal with these. I'm 20 years old, what do I know? Right, you know? right. what do you know? But it lasted for a summer and I met uh, my soon-to-be corrections partner through that experience. So fast forward a number of years to the book the title uh, the, for the book 
uh, came to me practically in my sleep because I was telling myself that life is composed of time because we only have so many minutes in it's, this, it's this earth. Yeah. They're for the clock. Right. And then the quality of that time, as you know, right. depends on what your relationship is with the people that you meet yeah. during the time that you have on that clock. <laughs> like well, on I'm Earth. glad that came out right. <laughs> well, that was good. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, that makes sense. Um, so, <coughs> um, so you do a lot of speaking um, I don't town? do I. Or, I would like to do more. Okay. I'd like to talk especially to uh, teenagers. To, to because schools, to the schools and stuff? I do, more, I do more speaking to inmates than I do to kids. You, you were, um, uh, let's see, he has 45 years of experience in fields of uh, delinquency, corrections, family, and group counseling, foster care, and forensic counseling. That's your background. Wow. So family delinquency and criminal and criminal justice system, teens and foster care. You were a great foster father, huh? Foster, he, listen, you guys, I'm to, heads up. This man and his wife fostered 125 children, foster sons. How in goodness, how did you ever do that? I mean, really. There has to be an element of <laughs> stupidity to it, I can tell you that. I mean, did they come and go in groups, or did they? <laughs> were they all there at one time, or I, <laughs> throughout the whole year? There, there was there was a time that I had seventeen teenagers. Oh there. my laws! <laughs> um, my license 17. was for ten. But, oh my uh, goodness! They I all want. I know that I met one of your foster sons, and he mm -hmm. was so enlightened and told me about what a neat dad that you are, and. He just blew you up. I paid uh, him, though. Yeah, he paid him. <laughs> you have to pay him. <laughs> yeah. I told him I'd, I'll he'd pay have you to later. pay me to keep him out of the next book. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's so sweet, though. Um, disciplining teens uh, for nearly licensed foster parents in St. Louis County, Duluth, Minnesota. You volunteered at the jail. Are you a volunteer jail counselor? I used to be before. Okay. Well, yeah, before I meant back in attack. 2001 yeah, and 2002. Right, right, right. And I'm sorry. And then um, he's also 90 in uh, 1985 was the president of St. Louis uh, County Foster Parent Association. That was really been an education to get. <laughs> I was elected while I was in the washroom. No, I went to. <laughs> while you were in the washroom. Watch, no, that's absolute fact. You were elected while you were in the that's washroom. That's right. <laughs> Came back, everybody was cheering, and I was wondering what they were cheering about. That's funny. <laughs> 125 foster sons. <laughs> and he was, he was featured in the uh, St. Paul Pioneer Press newspaper written by Ruben Rosario uh, in 2006. And, uh, and also, you, um, in 2006, Thanksgiving Day special, they did a Thanksgiving Day special on you. Mm -hmm. You appeared at WCCO television featuring my foster group home. And then in 2007, you appeared on CBS News, Assignment America, Sergeant with Steve Hartman. Several of my foster children were featured and available for, uh, for viewing on my website. His website is www.larryskids.com. L a r r y s k i d s dot com or Amazon dot com. So wow, present motivational speaker. I bet you got a lot to say. So you worked in the jail, in jail too. Yep. In corrections. Yeah. Were, seven seven years in the jail was uh, uh, some of the. I loved it. Did you love it? I loved it. Oh, I, good. I actually loved it. I, every morning when I walked in, I knew I had about 160 possibilities, you know? To help somebody. Yeah, but I mean, they, they were, 
And, and this is part of the book. It's a, it's a book about hope. It, it, it talks about individuals, nameless of course, but how funny they can be, how screwed up they can be. Right. I remember uh, an inmate, a female inmate that I spoke to that I believe had 17 personalities. Ooh. Distinguishable personalities. <laughs> and I used to talk to about six of them every night. You know. <laughs> poor uh, baby. <laughs> yeah, poor baby. And um, Oh my lord. <laughs> but just... People are really something, aren't they? Yeah. Aren't they amazing? I and and it, the, the thing is, that they don't, amazing people are all around us, whether they're your favorite waitress at your favorite greasy spoon or, um, you know, whatever. And that's what I want people to know because pe people that are lonely really don't have to be lonely because no. they have to get out there and give something. I used to tell my kids when they say, ah, nah, 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 nah. And they'd say, go across the street and take a shovel and go Help. shovel the snow that old lady's, old lady's yard. And I, they'd go over there mumbling and moaning and groaning, shovel the snow. And then I used to watch this lady walk out, put her arm around the kid, mm -hmm. bring him inside, and 45 minutes later, an hour later, Eaten. yeah, walking out with the uh, cookie in his hand or, you know, right. whatever. Yeah. And that's sweet. That's how it should be, though. That's how it should be, but as you know, this isn't the way it is. I know. And we need, to, I think we need to get back to some of those. Basic. Some uh, of those values and some of those. Morals and values. I'd like that. Things. Yeah. That'd yeah. be a good idea. I've been thinking that for years. <laughs> one kid, one of my kids that's uh, very close to me right now, as a matter of fact, he's living with me. When he was 12, he used to love to have my arm draped around his shoulders. Oh, sure. You know, if it wasn't, he would pick up my arm and, oh, would he? <laughs> you know, maneuver so he could put his arm on Get me. Hug. And he's still the same way. Yeah, that's good. Twenty some years later. Well, that's you know, good. It's, absolutely, it's good. Somebody asked me so once if, uh, if if there was one thing I hoped I taught my kids more than anything else, what would it be? And I said, I hope it was how to hug. Their kids, now their kids, my oldest kid, I think just turned 59. Oh, wow. wow. There's some people still trying to do the math. Let's see. 59. Larry's 65, he's 59. That's his father, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and my youngest is 32, 33. Wow. And none of them would, I think, even consider greeting me with a handshake. No. They still hug. That's the best way. And I've got, I've got two kids in uniforms in, yep. in you know, that are police officers. That's and, good. Um, They've all made successful um, ventures in life and, been a, and achieved some goals. You know, I, w I wish I could say that, cause, but I, I can't. A, a good many of them did. And, and a friend of mine used to say to me all the time that kids tend to grow up in spite of themselves. And, and <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm not sure I knew what he meant at the time, but I sure do now. Yeah. Um, and, and they did. I mean, they became, they became soldiers and... Uh, you know, one of them was in Iraq twice and, and wow. has, he, he's... He's got all of his he's limbs. Got, he's got all of his limbs, but he's got spinal cord injuries. Oh, no. Oh, and another no. one was in 101st Airborne. Oh, wow.